What if I told you there was a tool that can melt away your anxiety, anger, and other extreme or negative emotions like this? Sound too good to be true? I thought so too, but the good news is it's not too good to be true, it's real, and I'm going to teach it to you today. My name's Keelene and I had CPTSD for 17 long years before I finally learned how to heal it. Now the good news is, not only have I healed my own CPTSD, I've helped thousands of people around the world heal their PTSD, CPTSD, and history of past trauma. So if you struggle with any of those things, you're in the right place and make sure you subscribe for new videos every single week. Now, like I already mentioned, this tool is gonna teach you how to melt your triggers like magic, whether it's anxiety, anger, fear, any other negative or extreme emotion, <clears throat> excuse me, this should be your go-to tool. It is unbelievably powerful. And there are a couple reasons for that. Now, of course, it's not actually magic. And I'm going to teach you a behind the scenes, a little bit of what happens in the brain or what's happening in the brain when we use this tool and why it can work so quickly. Now, I love this tool because it's easy. It's versatile. Excuse me. I did not prep this, this word in advance. For those of you who don't know, I can't spell to save my life. Versatile, and it has a lot of variations, <laughs> which means you can use it in a lot of different situations. So basically this tool is super, super easy. It's super, super powerful because of these things, because it's easy, because it's versatile, because it has a lot of variations, right? It makes it powerful. Now, this tool, like I said, should be your go-to tool for absolutely anything that you're experiencing. So if you learn no other tool on your recovery journey, now actually let me back up a second. This tool is a coping tool. All right, it's a coping tool, it's not a healing tool. Now in other videos on my channel, you'll hear me talk about the difference between coping and healing. This is a coping tool. So it's outside of the scope of this video to actually talk about coping versus healing, but this is a coping tool. And it's extremely, extremely powerful. Now, I also want this, I call this the go-to tool. Because it is that powerful and it can be used in any situation with any sort of emotion that you're feeling. So anytime you get triggered, I want you to hear this. Anytime you get triggered, I want this to be your go-to. If you don't know any other tools, even if you do know any other tools, work this tool and squeeze every little thing you can out of it because it is going to absolutely change your life. Now, you might be asking yourself, Kayleen, okay, this video has been going on a little while. What the heck is this tool? What is it called? This tool is called, and don't be fooled by the name, it is called the Butterfly Hug. The butterfly hug. Now I'm telling you, this tool, you know, it's it's easy, it's versatile, it's powerful, right? And then it's called the butterfly hug. Now, again, don't be fooled by the name. Butterfly are actually pretty kick butt kind of insects, right? Or I'm not sure if they're insects or animals, right? But insects, they are so, so kick butt. There is a butterfly that can fly in one day the distance from New York all the way to San Francisco, across the entire country. These little tiny things, okay? So they're actually really, really powerful uh, insects that we have here. But the reason that it's called the butterfly hug is not that. You're gonna see why it's called the butterfly hug, and there are a couple reasons for it. Number one, it's called the butterfly hug because it was made for a very specific section of the population. It was not made for adults, it was made for children. Number two, it's called the butterfly hug because of how we actually do it, which I'll talk about in one second. And how we do it is something called bilateral stimulation, right? And so I want you to think about a butterfly has two wings, right? It has two sides and it's using those wings to propel it forward or up or wherever it's going. In the butterfly hug, and I'll talk about this in a second here, we are going to use two sides of our body. Okay, so that's why it's called the butterfly hug. And again, don't be fooled by the name. It is so, so powerful. So what I'm going to draw here is a brain. And again, if you can excuse my drawing, I did fail art in high school. If you didn't know that was possible, now you know. All right, so what we're going to draw here, we're going to try to draw two hemispheres of a brain. So I want you to imagine that this is your brain. Again, two hemispheres, and I've drawn them apart here for a reason and we're kind of looking down at it, right? So we have a left hemisphere and we have a right hemisphere. Now, like I said, this butterfly hug is using something called bilateral stimulation. So I wanna walk you through it and then you can do it literally right now. Now, something else I wanna mention is this tool is safe. Safe. 
really important word there. You hearing that? This tool is safe to use. This tool is not going to do any damage to you. What's cool about this tool, again, it was made for kids, meaning it's designed with the idea in mind that you do not have to have cognitive awareness of what's going on. So there needs to be no thought process in this, involved in this. No thought process, meaning you are simply performing this action. It is a physical action you're going to perform and it's going to give you those results. You hearing that? Does that make sense? Right? So you do not have to have any higher level thinking in order to do this tool. Now, a lot of relief tools, a lot of coping tools, you do need that higher level of thinking. Here, it is simply a physical act we are going to do. So let me walk you through how to do it. And I'm, I, we can write down steps in a second here, but I'm, I'm not even going to. It's that simple, right? Now, how are you going to do it? And now I'm going to give you some variations is you're going to take your hands, you're going to cross them and I'm going to be careful of my mic here. So I don't make a loud sound. You're going to put them on your collarbones. So you can see like collarbone here, collarbone here, right? So you can cross your arms, put them on your collarbones. And then what you do is you're going to alternate tapping your hands, right? So it's going to look like this tap, 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 tap. So you're going to alternate tapping your collarbones. That's where that bilateral stimulation is coming into play, right? So again, do it with me right now. Cross your arms, Put your hands on your collarbones, right? Or just below your collarbones and alternate tapping. That's it, right? There's no fear in doing this tool. This is a totally safe tool to do. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, how hard do I tap? How soft should it be? How fast should it be? How slow should it be? What should I be thinking about? Here's what I want you to do. Now there's a, a little bit like anything, this is a skill, right? So there's a little bit of time where you're going to fall into your rhythm. Some people, they pick it up right away and it's super easy. Other people, it takes a little bit of practice like anything else, right? So you can change the intensity, right? So the actual, uh, excuse me, strength of your tap based on what feels good to you. And you can change the speed based on what feels good to you, right? So what you'll eventually find is you fall into a little bit of a rhythm. Now you can see I'm just tapping with two fingers here, right on my collarbone, right? And so all you wanna do here Again, it's fall into that rhythm and just breathe. That's it. That's it. Okay, it's that easy. Okay, so there, there are barely steps to this process, right? Cross your arms, alternate tapping, take a couple deep breaths while you're doing this. And then after 30, 60 seconds, are you hearing that? 30, 60 seconds, I want you to stop, check in with yourself, okay? And see where that anxiety level is or see how that fear is, is, is feeling, right? Or those extreme emotions, see what level of calm you've reached. Then, if you're not where you want to be yet, continue doing it. Now, I said 30 to 60 seconds here. Let me find a color, right? So, checking in with yourself 30 to 60 seconds in. Why? Because literally, it can be that fast. It can be that fast, okay? So there's like no excuse not to use this tool because it can happen that fast. It can help you reach that level of calm that quickly. Are you hearing that? That's like, that's the magic part of this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain what's happening in the brain. But that's the magic part of this, okay? It happens that quickly. Now, again, 30 to 60 seconds, I want you to check in with yourself. After that, if you're still feeling it, keep it going. You can keep this going for as long as you want. But check in with yourself after a minute and then usually under two minutes, it's like, like literally, it's like magic, all right? So here's what's happening in the brain. Here's why that works. Now you're welcome to do that right now. I encourage you to do that right now. You can do that for, for the rest of the video. If you have any sort of elevated state, if you have any sort of elevated feeling, do this tool. It's the go-to tool. And I'm gonna teach you the variations that are gonna make it even easier in just a second here. But here we have our brain, right? We have two hemispheres of our brain. So we have a left hemisphere and we have a right hemisphere. What's happening when we are tapping the collarbones, we're alternating those taps. What happens is when I'm with my right hand tapping like my left collarbone, I'm stimulating half of my brain. So actually when I'm tapping the left side of my body, I'm actually stimulating the right hemisphere of my brain and vice versa, right? So I'm tapping, alternating, the uh, alternate tapping the sides of my body. And what that's doing is it's stimulating the sides of my brain here. So what's happening is when I'm tapping, I'm stimulating this side, and then I'm stimulating this side, then I'm stimulating this side, stimulating this side. And so it's this back and forth where it's stimulating this, and then 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 this. And so what's happening is we end up with this kind of nice cadence of our brain 
being active here and then active here and then active here and then active here. And we keep doing that, activating these sides of our brain. And what we're doing is we're hacking into, and I say hacking, and you'll hear me use words like that just because they're easy to relate uh, to kind of everyday life. We're hacking into a very, very powerful system in our brain. And that is our working memory, right? So our working memory. Now, if you've seen other videos that I've done, you'll know that something really important happens in our working memory. Our working memory is where something we call processing happens. Now, I use this word processing in a number of different ways, which can be confusing, so let me explain it. Processing can mean we are taking in the information, we are literally processing information. Right now, your brain, your working memory is processing this information that you're hearing. Processing, I'm also using as we are processing deep root trauma, right? So we are taking information out of our long-term memory, so our deep trauma, and again, you'll see this in other videos, uh, and we're bringing it into the working memory to be processed. So regardless of how I'm using it, it's happening in the working memory, but basically here I'm talking about like long-term and short-term. And even these terms don't really quite do it. So when I say long-term, I mean like things that are basically like really, really, really important, like high level and then like low level, right? So like surface level and then deep it is even better than long-term and short-term, right? But regardless, that's what's happening. We're hacking into this working memory. Now specifically, we're hacking in, and again, I'm using this word hacking in, to something that is happening. Now, really important here. Our brain is doing this first of all, all the time. Second of all, our brain is doing this at a very deep level at a very specific time for us. Now, if you struggle with sleep issues, this is, this is why. It's because your brain is trying to use this system and it's getting interrupted because of a history of past trauma. But what we're doing is we're hacking in to basically the same, same system that our brain uses when we're in REM sleep. So REM stands for rapid eye movement rapid eye movement. And so this sleep stage, right? This part of our sleep cycle is basically where our body is doing the most kind of processing of information. And so I want you to think about it like this during this stage of sleep, a couple things are happening, right? If you, if you have a dog or a cat, you'll notice them in this stage. This is, that's the stage where they twitch and they maybe they growl. I know my dog Shiloh, he'll fall asleep and he'll like, you know, he'll like look like he's running and he'll whoop, 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 right. And you know, his, sometimes his mouth is kind of going and stuff like that. Right. That's the REM stage of sleep. Now animals have that too. Right. So what's happening in this rapid eye movement. Why is it called rapid eye movement? Right. Our eyes are rapidly moving. Now it's not a perfect left and right. It's a little bit more chaotic than that, but uh, left and right underneath our eyelids. So our eyes are moving rapidly underneath our eyelids. Notice the way my hands are moving right here. So if our, our eyes are moving left and right underneath our eyelids, why do you think that's happening? Why do you think your body's doing that? What's happening when our eyes are moving like that underneath our eyelids is it's stimulating the different hemispheres of our brain, right? You see my little dance moves here. It's stimulating. So when our eyes move left, it's stimulating the right hemisphere of our brain. When our eyes move right, it's stimulating the left hemisphere of our brain. So what it's doing is it's activating these hemispheres. So it's like, this is active, this is active, this is active, this is active, okay? And it's back and forth, back and forth, active, active, active. And what's happening here is while our brain is doing that, or rather while our eyes are doing that, our brain is basically making connections. So our brain, it's our brain's way, and this is the way that I think of it, again, to simplify it, of connecting, okay? You getting this? It, uh, and communicating with with itself right so i want you to think about you have two like this is just again another way to think about it these two hemispheres think about them as totally separate right we have creative we have logical there's all sorts of ways to think about this but if you think about them as totally separate imagine you have two totally separate departments in an organization right so you have the marketing part department and you have the product development department if they never communicate guess what? They're never going to be able to be successful. And so they need to sit down every day and they need to communicate. And that's what your brain does every single night or again, or attempts to do. You getting this? Really super powerful, right? So our brain is communicating. And when our brain is communicating, that's when it processes information. Again, both like surface level information, just like 
random information as well as really deep important information now if you struggle with sleep issues and we're going to digress a little bit here the reason is this process is getting interrupted okay and there's a, a reason for that and we can fix that and we'll talk more about that in future videos but what's important here is when you're using the butterfly hug you're kind of hacking into this system on a very very surface level so we're not using this to process deep trauma here. We're basically using it again to hack in. Now, again, I use the word short term and long term, but more accurately, it's surface and deep at a surface level. So that's what the butterfly hug is helping you do. Again, hack in at a surface level. You do not need a higher level of understanding. You do not need cognitive awareness for this to work. All that you're doing is breathing, and stimulating each side of your brain. Your brain is doing the rest. You hearing that? Does that make sense? Your brain is doing the work here. You don't need to do any work here other than the physical. Okay, so I wanna talk about some variations and I want you to think about this. If REM, rapid eye movement sleep, where I told you your eyes are moving left and right underneath your eyelids, if that's activating this same system, the same processing system, right? What are some ways, do you think, that we can use variations of the butterfly hug. So there's a couple things, I wanna back up a second. There's a couple things I already told you, right? Your brain is using this system during REM sleep and your eyes are moving back and forth. When you stimulate the left and right sides of your body, right? It, it simulates REM sleep, but it stimulates, right? The left and right hemispheres of your brain. Now I know that's a lot, those, those two words together always trip me up, right? But when you stimulate, the left and right sides of your body, it stimulates the left and right hemispheres of your brain. So knowing that information, I want you to think about, okay, so what are some other ways do you think, and before I give you answers, I want you to think about this. This is important. I want you to be an independent healer. I want you to know that it's not me that has all the answers. I'm here to help you. My job as a coach very often is to help pull the answers out of you. You have a lot more answers than you realize. So my job is to get the ball rolling and to get you thinking in the way where you can feel empowered and understand that you actually have a lot more answers than you realize. Okay, so what are some ways do you think that we could, alter, we could do alternate alternations? We have alternating ways variations of the butterfly hug excuse me there so what are some different ways do you think that we can do the butterfly hug now number one is going to be our hands crossed over our chest right you see that hands over chest what's another way there's a hint right there's a hint another way that we can do this is we can use our eyes we can use our eyes Does that make sense right so eyes So what does that mean, right? So we can use our eyes to go back and forth. So that means we can be sitting right now. I want you to do this with me. Sit and shut your eyes. Now I'm gonna teach you how to do this so you don't strain your eyes, right? We can be sitting, right? Take a deep breath, see what I just did? Instinctively, intuitively, the second I shut my eyes, deep breath, right? Take a deep breath and then move your eyes all the way left, all the way right, underneath your eyelids. I don't know if you can see my eyes under here moving, right? And so what you wanna do, now you can, you can do this with your eyes open as well, is, and I'm gonna do this with a pen here, you want to, and test this, because you'll feel when it's right. You want to move your eyes as far left. Now, again, don't move your head. Don't move your head. We're just moving our eyes here. As far, well, from your perspective, this will be left, right? Left or right, as you can, without causing strain. So go as far as you can, and then go to the point where it's a, it strains your eyes a little bit, and then bring it back in. Does that make sense? So as far as you can without causing strain. Again, don't move your head. And left and right and left and right. Now you can do that with your eyes open or your eyes closed, whatever's most comfortable to you. So eyes is another one, right? So now we have two variations. We have our hands over our chest. We have doing it with our eyes. Again, open or closed. What's another variation that we can do? Again, all you have to do is stimulate the left and right sides of your body. That's it. That's what we're going for, right? What are some other ways you can do this? Okay, there's something, again, made for kids. Uh, there's a couple of names for it. They call it the angel hug, right? And so you take your arms, or rather you take your hands and you put them like right on your biceps and you squeeze back and forth. Okay, so you squeeze alternating. Okay, so we'll call that the A-hug. There's another way to do it. 
Now, are you getting how powerful this is? Now, this is not, you know, we're, we're making these up here, but I want you to see, okay, what's something I can come up with on my own? Now, I'm going to give you the most powerful ones so that you leave here and you actually have something to take action on. But there's a ton of ways that you can do this. Another way, right? You take your hands, put them, now you don't have to cross your arms for this. Put them right on the top of your thighs. This is a great one if you're at work, if you're at the dinner table, wherever you are, if there's a desk in front of you and you want this to be subtle, are you getting this? how powerful this is, that you can do this and people will not even notice. Put your hands on the top of your thighs and tap back and forth, back and forth. This is another great one. If you're laying down underneath the covers, this can often be more comfortable, right? Hands on your thighs, back and forth, tap back and forth. If I was doing this under the desk right now, you wouldn't know except the fact that I'm telling you, right? Okay, so there's another really powerful variation, thighs. Okay, so really, really super powerful. Now I wanna bring one more thing up because I want you to leave here with kind of a full toolbox of different ways that you can use this because I want you to use the one that's going to work best for you. And so hear me when I say this, there are going to be certain situations that you find yourself in that you know you commonly find yourself in. When you're anxious, when you're angry, when you have extreme emotions, whatever that extreme emotion is. I want you to think about those situations right now and think about, okay, of the variations that we've talked about so far, which one would work, are you hearing this? Which one would work best for me in that situation? Maybe you commonly find yourself in your car. Guess what? You're not gonna be, unless you drive an automatic car, which maybe you do, an automatic meaning you don't have to drive it, you're not gonna be able to use both hands. Okay, so I want you to think about, okay, so what's another way, way that we can do that? Well, this used to be my personal favorite. Take one hand. Take one hand and tap like this on your collarbones. One handed tap, that's all it has to be. All you have to do, right? Take your, your, your middle finger and your thumb, spread it as far out as possible, and tap like that. Guess what? Then you can do it while you're driving, while you're doing something else, right? So there's another one, the one handed. Okay, and I have one more, and this one is based on something that is really, really powerful but there are a couple ways that you can do it, but you don't have to do this, right? So again, I want you to look at these and think, okay, so far, what are the ones that I can use? Then I want you to sit down and I want you to say, okay, you know what? Here's an even better way to do this. I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna try them all and I'm gonna see which one feels best. You know what? Okay, so I went through and I tried them all and you know, the hands over the chest, that just works best for me uh, and hands on the thighs, that works best for me. So those are gonna be my go-to. Then throw the others out, you hear me? Then throw the others out, doesn't matter. Okay, these are all really, really powerful. What you might find, and I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit, is you know what? The hands on the thighs combined with doing it with my eyes, that's what works best for me. You can combine these as well. That's gonna make it even more powerful. Okay, the last one here that I wanna talk about is visualization. Again, can't spell to save my life, apologize. Right, so visualization. So I want you to imagine there is an imaginary line running down the center of my body here, the midline on my body. So I have a left side and I have a right side and they're separated by this line couple ways that you can do this. I want you to imagine that the left side of me right now is all lit up, right? It's like bright. And the right side of me is dark. So imagine that there's, there's energy there, right? And so in this visualization, you're imagining that energy jumping from the left to the right. Okay, so now my right side is lit up and my left side is dark. And then jumps again, okay? And when you're visualizing this, and if you're a strong visualizer, and I, I will do future sessions on visualization, this will be kind of second nature to you, you want to visualize the feeling of it. So uh, a tingling could be a great way to do this, where it's, you, you know, it's jumping from left to right. And it's jumping from right to left, okay? So there's a way that you can do it literally, where you can do that with your eyes open or your eyes closed, no one will ever know, super, super subtle. Other way that you can do that, Imagine light is traveling through your body. So from the tip of your left finger, imagine like a line of light is traveling, 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 traveling. Again, if you do this right, you can feel it tingling all the way to the midline of your body and then traveling all the way to the other side and all the way back. So that's the visualization. Again, a number of ways that you can do this. So sit down and try each one of these things. Really important last point. I want you to do this meaning practice this when you feel well. What, okay, why would I need to practice this when I feel well, when I don't feel anxious, when I don't feel angry, when I don't feel scared? I want you to imagine you're a singer, 
or a dancer or someone that's going to give a speech somewhere on a huge stage someday. I want to think about like Wembley Stadium, I believe is the biggest stadium in the world for concerts and things like that, right? Wembley Stadium and uh, you need to give a speech there. Are you going to go up right now unprepared and give that speech? How's that going to go if you do that, right? So if I want to play a show at Wembley Stadium, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice really for years before it's actually showtime. Why is that? Because I want it to feel like second nature, right? You don't just get up there and dance. The people that uh, play on that stage, that speak on that stage, they do so because they're the experts. They become the experts in that field. Now I'm talking about art, music. They become the experts in that field by practicing. So they practice when they're not on stage so that when they're on stage, it's second nature. Does that make sense? So I want you to practice this skill when you don't need it so that when you need it, it's second nature so that you can go to it. No problem. You can call on it. It's easier than ever. Okay. It's already such an easy tool, but it's easier than ever. It's second nature. Okay. It's like, it's like breathing. Okay. If you saw earlier in the video and I would encourage you to go back and look at this, the second I closed my eyes, what happened? I took a deep breath. Now it's not because I actively told myself to take a deep breath. It's because for years I practiced that, right? When I close my eyes to so do any sort of tool. Now I don't need to use this tool anymore right? But when I close my eyes, that's the thing that came next because I practice it, practice it, practice it. And I practice it so that when I needed it, right, it came like second nature. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And I do new videos every week on PTSD, healing, recovery, and all the things that go with PTSD, CPTSD, and past trauma. So amazing job. I love you. I believe in you. And I'll see you in the next video.